Mr. Sainath, sir. Mr. Sainath. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir, good morning. Are you ready? Yes, sir. I'm ready. Can you able to hear me? Yes, yes, sir. It's his voice is clear. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, dear uh, Ravi, De Ravi Teja, sir. Yeah, I'm there. Sir, sir we'll start the program, sir. Okay. Okay, okay, sir. It's a very good morning to dear participants. Today, the third day of the ACT sponsored HTTP Series B program. Today, our resource person is Dr. A.V. Raviteja from IIT Rupert. Uh, Mr. Welcome you, sir. Uh, Mr. Sainath, sir, please introduce today our resource person, Dr. A.V. Raviteja from IIT Rupert. With, with your permission, sir. Sir, uh, very good morning, sir. Uh, on behalf of today Department of PVRIT, we, we welcome you to this uh, Series D STTP sponsored by the AACT. Dr. A. V. Raviteja received the PhD degree from the Department of Electrical Engineering, IIT Karakpur in 2016. Prior to this, he received the PE degree in Electrical and Electronics Engineering from Usmane University, Hyderabad, India in 2008 and the MTech degree in machine drives and power electronics specialization from the Indian Institute of Technology, Karakpur, India in 2010. Currently, he is working as an assistant professor in electrical engineering department at IIT Roper. Prior to the joining IIT Roper, he also worked as uh, bits, worked at Bits Pilani Hyderabad campus as an assistant professor in the department. His current research areas are electrical vehicles and uh, renewable energy integrations. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation and uh, spending your valuable time. We welcome you, sir, once again. Yeah. Thank you, sir. I thank you, Professor Sarvanan. Uh, so, uh, so we will start. Yes, yes, sir. We'll start the program, yeah. sir. So uh, as the title indicates, uh, practical design and implementation of solar and wind power generation system at a given location. So the objective of this talk is by the end, you should have a feel. Uh, or, uh, on what factors need to be taken care of while you are designing and implementing a solar power generation system and wind power generation system. And can we think of systems which combine both solar and wind power, uh, um, both uh, to generate power combinedly and give to the power grid, right? So we will proceed. These are the contents of the talk. First, we will introduce the topic and then yes. we will go for solar power generation system. Uh, what are the factors that need to be considered while designing and implementing a solar power generation system? And then we will proceed for wind power generation system in the similar line. And then we will see what are the advantages of hybrid renewable power generation system also where hybrid means more than one renewable power source, uh, we are generating power at a time. And then what are complementary sources? And then we will briefly discuss about what are the converter configurations yeah. that we can think of for this hybrid renewable generation system, which, which includes solar power and wind power. And then we'll conclude the talk with some future scope. Right? So introduction, as we all know, renewable generation schemes and their issues. There are various non-renewable generation with oil, natural gas, coal. But what are the main issues? One is the depletion of natural resources like oil, natural gas, coal. This is why we are going into renewable power generation schemes. And then, of course, the non-renewable schemes produce a lot of pollution. Okay, so because of these two reasons, uh, every country uh, in the world and as a whole globally, we are going for renewable generation schemes uh, so that these two issues can be mitigated. Right? So, uh, so renewable generation scheme is the need of the hour. So we, as at present, if we see only 1.8% of the world's total energy requirement is supplied by renewable energy sources, which is very low. Right? And our target is very ambitious. By 2030, just 10 years from now, we want this 1.8% to increase to 40%. This is the target we have set for ourselves in order that we have lesser pollution and before the natural resources deplete, we go into renewable energy sources. Right? So in India, if we see, we are doing pretty good actually. Renewable power accounts for 35.86% of the total 
power generated as of March 2020 data. Right. So, uh, according to European Commission, world's energy supply by year 2050, this is projected that 40% of the global power requirement should be met by solar, 30% by biomass, 15% by wind, 10% by hydro, and only 5% from oil. That means we can say that this 1.8% renewable uh, the, in this factor must be the non-renewable source and all the other power which now we are generating with non-renewable sources must be generated from renewable sources. So this is a huge demand. That is why research areas in across all the departments in the globe are trying to work in their own capacity to uh, to invent new techniques so that we can more efficiently convert renewable energy and give to the grid. Right? Various renewable energy schemes we know, those are solar, wind, hydro, biomass, geothermal. And there are some common issues which are there for all the available renewable generation schemes. One, one is the issue of unreliability. If you see solar, we don't know whether how much solar radiation will come in a particular day. And now with the increased pollution and depletion of uh, natural resources and lot of uh, deforestation, it became more unreliable. And it is very difficult to estimate how much, even in the next day, how much renewable source will be available even in the next day. This is one major issue that is uh, uh, that is actually hindering the renewable power generation schemes to come in a more big way, right? And another issue is higher initial cost per unit generation. If you see the cost per unit generation, it is high as compared to non-renewable source. Of course, with more and more installations coming up, this cost is drastically coming down. But these two are the issues with renewable power generation schemes which need to be taken care so that uh, this uh, more we can generate power from renewable sources. Right. So first we will see solar power. Solar power is a renewable source. It is abundantly available. If you see the availability of solar power, the only solar if we use as a renewable power source, it is enough to power the entire globe, five power demand, and it is enough, only solar is enough to meet the demand of the globe more than five times. So if we go for only solar based installation also, that is enough. Uh, to meet the demand, at least current demand of the globe. And another good advantage with solar is there are no emissions during operation. Right? But another advantage of solar is if you see solar panel output, it is basically a DC, DC voltage. So it is an electrical signal. So electrical signal converting to electrical and giving to grid is not very challenging. So it is easier. So that is the another advantage with solar. But of course, one problem or uh, thing with solar power generation system is you need a lot of land. But nowadays, people are thinking of installing solar panels on the riverbed uh, and on the roofs. Uh, so thereby reducing the requirement of land drastically. So as of now in India, if we see the installation of solar, it is 31.696 gigawatt already installed as of October 2019 data. So it is actually a good number and it is increasing further. Right? So now we will see how to make a solar power generation system specific to a given location. Before we see that, first we have to see what is the output of the solar panel, how, how it looks like. Solar PV curve. If you plot the any solar panel output, current versus voltage or power versus voltage. So this graph is the current versus voltage graph, which is shown in red. 
and this graph which is shown in blue is the power versus voltage graph if we see it is a non linear graph right so at any given location for a given irradiation also the power will vary and it will reach some maximum and then again power will fall down and corresponding to that the current and voltage also will change this is the typical characteristic of a pv panel so if we see this we cannot extra for a given irradiation also if we operate at different voltages we get different powers so at a given irradiation also we have to operate at maximum power so which is called as maximum power point so this we have to take care and this curve as a whole will change for uh, go up and down for different irradiations so for a given irradiation we should match the the maximum power and at a different irradiation this maximum power point the maximum power will also change so this will continuously vary throughout the day and as we discussed solar is a unreliable source suddenly idu idana idu aithe ipudu vaadu hello ini send cheyada but actually manaki endani separate password ikkada manaki vaadu okka trade link ichindi kabatti eta ayina hello meer ikkada chusayina dear part kindly mute your mic manaki trade pass chesi dear participants kindly mute your audio yeah thank you uh, so this power you have to match right and this graph will change throughout the day and also depends on the location so first we have to place the panels if we want to uh, practically implement a solar power generation system we have to place the panels first is panel orientation in which direction east west north south how i should orient my panel so you see india india is in the northern hemisphere so panels must be facing south then only we get maximum power uh, for maximum irradiation falling on the panel throughout the day right and even if facing south at what angle i should place my panels then only i will get maximum power so this angle of tilt the uh, tilt uh, means the angle at which i place my panel depends on the depends on the location coordinates latitude longitude coordinate you should see and then based on that you have to see for maximum part of the day at what angle if i tilt my panel i will get maximum power it is not optimal for the throughout the day because the sun will move earth is also revolving but how in what angle think them at fixed angle uh, so that i get maximum power throughout the day or for most of most part of the day or if you have option to align the panel dynamically throughout the day then that is better but that will increase cost because you will need to align all the solar panels along with the sun throughout the day and some mechanical arrangement is required so this will again consume more cost so it is preferable to align the tilt angle so that for uh, this will give maximum power for most of the day in india if we see it is approximately around 12 degree for southern part of india and approximately 30 degree for northern part of india so this is how you place your panels it should face south and you should place at an angle the exact location uh, exact you will know by the location latitude and longitude coordinates but approximately it is 12 degrees for southern part of india 30 degree around for the northern part of india so once you place the panel in this angle and tilt uh, and facing south after that you have to uh, decide how many panels i am going to place right how many panels you are going to place depends on how much power you want to extract and that you have to estimate first first you have to extract how much power you want and then based on that you have to decide how many panels i want to place for a given location right so you will calculate like this estimated power output suppose if sun is available on average 
for seven hours in a day at a particular location. If I have a 250 watt panel, I would approximately get 250 into 0.75. 0.75 means all throughout the day you will not get 250 watt. You will get sometimes less, sometimes more, and you have to account for losses also in the uh, converter conversion system because solar panel output is basically DC and your grid requirement is AC, alternating current. So if we see Indian grid, which requires or demands 230 volt 50 hertz supply. So this DC, which is the output of the solar panels must be converted into 230 volt 50 hertz AC supply. Then only I can give power to grid. Or else if you want to use this power in your household, then also you should convert it to 230 volt 50 hertz because all the appliances that we are having at home are rated for 230 volt 50 hertz AC. Right, so you have to convert it. So this conversion, uh, every time when you convert power from one form to another form, there will be some losses. You will not be able to convert with hundred percent efficiency. So these converters and all, how they are, uh, they are to be designed, that we will see later. But you have you, so converters will have some efficiency, and if you have more number of stages, more number of conversions, then the efficiency will drop. So uh, expecting at least the conversion system to have 75% efficiency, a 250 watt panel for seven hours would give me uh, 250 into 0.75 into seven. So around 1.31 kilowatt hour or 1.3 units of energy, right? So if how many units of power you want in a day? So based on that, you have to decide how many panels I want to keep at a given location. Right, and in that location, you will place your panel facing south in India, and angle of tilt you will decide based on the latitude and longitude. Mm -hmm. And uh, after placing the panel, you will get approximately this much amount of energy in a day. So, if you are you uh, designing the solar power generation system for your household, you must first decide how many units of power you require. And based on that, uh, if suppose if I want five units of power in a day, then 1.3 I am getting. So five divided by 1.3 unit. So that will give decide how many panels I want to install in uh, for for your for meeting your requirement of home. Right. Generally, we take the higher end. Suppose by 1.3, around five panels, four to five panels if we keep, that is enough for you to meet the five unit requirement in a day. Right. So this is how we have to decide how many panels. After deciding how many panels, then you have to have a conversion system. For how, because as we discussed, the output of solar panel is DC. And the grid requires, grid or the household appliances require AC. AC in what form? 230 volt RMS and 50 hertz AC I require. So I require some converter to convert this DC into AC. And if you want the power at night time also, then you need to have some storage as well. Because at night, or on cloudy days, the solar power is not available. So the power which you have generated in the day, you will store it in the battery and then use it for night or when solar is sun is not available. So some battery is required and some converters. Right? So this converter, first basic converter that you require would be an inverter. Inverter is nothing but a DC to AC converter. So DC, uh, if I give input, it will give an AC output, right? And then there is, there are two things to be considered while designing the solar power generation system, which includes as of now battery and inverter. And along with inverter, you will require one another DC to DC converter. Uh, 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 why, why you require is for two reasons. First reason is, as we saw in the PV solar panel, PV curve, the power is non-uniform. It is 
the at what voltage you operate decides how much power you extract from a given panel and obviously anyone would like to extract maximum power at a given irradiation from a given panel which is here right so for uh, extracting maximum power you need to operate at a particular voltage which we call as maximum power point voltage when you operate at this voltage only you will get maximum power from a given panel or given series of panels right so this maximum voltage uh, ma maximum power point voltage you have to operate so for that you will need one dc to dc converter for mppt tracking so for maximum power point tracking what this converter will do is this converter will will uh, operate such that at the input or the uh, solar panel output side that voltage is maintained the voltage corresponding to maximum power point voltage so that i extract maximum power from the panel at that location at a given irradiation so this is one converter for maximum power point and then there is another challenge another challenge is for generating 230 volt 50 hertz ac you need minimum dc link voltage and for getting dc voltage you can connect more panels in series so that the dc voltage will add up and give you more voltage or sometimes if that voltage is still not enough say if only five panels of 12 volt i am having 12 into 5 i will get only 60 volts 60 volts is not enough for converting uh, for the inverter to convert into 230 volt ac you need a minimum of 325 volt at least the inverter to convert to the 230 volt ac so for safe margin we take generally 400 volt dc 400 volt dc should be there at the input side of the inverter so that you will get then so that the inverter is able to generate 230 volt 50 hertz ac otherwise it cannot give with small voltage it cannot generate 230 volt ac so in the situations where the solar panels in series are not sufficiently enough to generate 400 volt dc at the input of the inverter you will have to it use another dc to dc converter what is the job of this dc to dc converter this job of this is to boost the voltage or to amplify the voltage from say 60 volt to 400 volt 60 volt suppose five panels of 12 volt rating i am using then 60 volt to 400 volt if you have 24 volt rating then you may get 120 volt then still it is not enough 120 volt to 400 volt some dc to dc converter which can boost this voltage so boost type dc to dc converters are preferable here this is only to be to give sufficient dc voltage to the inverter to generate 230 volt 50 hertz ac so these are all the constraints so if you are having less number of panels then you will definitely need a convert dc to dc converter for boosting the voltage in large installations what is done is they, they place number of panels hundreds of panels in series so that the output voltage is high enough to be converted into 230 volt 50 hertz ac even in the smallest irradiation okay by connecting panels this is what we have discussed 400 volt may be obtained by connecting many panels in series to get more than 325 volt in a power plant in household this may not be possible so we require a dc to dc converter for boosting the voltage to the required value which is say 400 volts right another dc dc converter which we have already discussed for is required for maximum power point or flexible power point tracking maximum power point i understand uh, always operating at maximum power what do you mean by flexible power point tracking flexible power point tracking means suppose you are using uh, a, a solar panel output at your home at your home only and you are not giving power to grid in a and at at a particular instant at your home you 
आर यूटिलाइजिंग ओनली वन थाउजेंड वॉट ऑफ पावर बट यू आर हैविंग ए गुड सोलर रेडिएशन एट द टॉप एंड इट इज एबल टू जनरेट एट मैक्सिम पावर वन पॉइंट फाइव किलो वॉट सो यूर रिक्वायरमेंट इज वन किलो वॉट बट यू आर हैविंग रेडिएशन करस्पॉन्डिंग टू मैक्सिम पावर वन पॉइंट फाइव किलो वॉट देन देर इज अ मिसमैच इफ यू आर कनेक्टेड टू ग्रिड that is fine that remaining 500 watt you can give to the grid but if you are not connected to the grid then what you should do you should yourself forcefully operate the pv panel at less than power point why because your demand is only 1 kilowatt you can you if you generate more than 1 kilowatt then where you will give that power if you have battery or grid then you can charge the battery or give to the grid or in case if your battery is fully charged and you are not connected to grid then you should not overcharge the battery that will again damage your battery so you have to give that power you have to forcefully operate at less than maximum power point in order to meet your demand so in that situation what you have to simply do is you have to generate only that much power that the load is demanding because your battery is fully charged and you are not connected to grid this we call as flexible power point tracking suppose in if a situation of other way will happen my generation at maximum power is only 1.5 kilowatt and but my demand is 2 kilowatt that may also happen so if my demand is 2 kilowatt and maximum generation maximum power point generation is only 1.5 kilowatt in that case what i can maximum do is i can operate at maximum power point only right so in that case this flexible power point will shift to maximum power point so it will draw maximum power in case when the demand is greater than or equal to the uh, maximum power that is being generated then flexible power point will be fixed at maximum power point or uh, but in other cases where the demand is less than maximum power gen being gen that can be generated at that instant then flexible power point will shift to the other point where of course you will under utilizing the panels but because your there is no load to consume that power so you have to reduce your uh, 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 generation itself so that we call as flexible power point tracking right and then along with this you have to have a sufficient battery and how battery storage and then battery of course requires battery management system for increasing its reliability so this battery storage also you have to decide based on how many hours you you want to supply power and how much power and uh, for what duration for what duration how much power you want to supply based on that you will decide the battery capacity okay so these are the considerations you have to make for designing a uh, solar power generation system practically right from panel uh, how many panels and how much tilt and then the converter uh, dc to dc converter one for maximum power or flexible power point tracking and the dc to dc converter in case the voltage is not sufficient and then an inverter inverter which simply converts the dc into ac 230 volt ac how to convert right so now we will see wind power generation system how to design practically a wind power generation system so wind power also has the similar good features like solar power one is it is renewable it is also abundantly available and then no emissions during operation then the good thing with wind power generation system is it doesn't require water why solar power generation system require water means after long duration of operation because solar panels are exposed to the environment the uh, the upper layer of the panel will be dust 
so if there is dust on the panel then the panel efficiency will come down so what is done generally is uh, small water pipes are kept so and so that with water the panel dust is cleaned from time to time uh, so that we don't get a lesser amount of power or we utilize the panel to the maximum capacity always but wind doesn't require such water uh, for cleaning purposes right and then another advantage of wind is it uses little land just for the tower if you see the horizontal axis wind turbine as shown in the figure it only require place for the tower after that uh, these all are placed on the top so that Uh, you don't require land so this can be placed in farms and buildings everywhere right so that uh, that way you have lot of uh, save uh, in the land so especially for highly populated countries like india which have lot of uh, demand for land uh, so the wind power generation uh, systems are preferable right if you see installation in india Now, as on June 2018, 34 around gigawatt of wind power plant have been installed, uh, which I think we must have increased uh, uh, much by now. Right? So now we will see wind power generation system. What are the practical things that need to be considered? For that, first, because this is a mechanical thing, we will see from the um, starting so from from wind i want to get power so for that i have to know how much power is available in the wind so if we see the power available in the wind is in the form of kinetic energy right so if we see kinetic energy uh, that is the power available in the wind that is half air mass per unit time into wind velocity square so which is nothing but half rho a v infinity cube where rho is the air density of course this is again dependent on the location a is the rotor area rotor uh, depends on the uh, this depends on the type of wind turbine that you are using and its dimension and v infinity is the wind velocity wind velocity is the v infinity means it is the free wind velocity uh, means there is no obstacle it is assumed that there is no obstacle like trees or the wind blades itself or the any any other obstacle it is a free wind velocity v infinity so this is the power contained in the wind so how much power from the available power in the wind can we extract can we extract 100% 100% if we extract then the kinetic energy of wind become zero so theoretically it has been proved that even theoretically we can extract only 60% around 0.59 of p not p not is the power available in the wind so this is the theoretical limit so this was first proved by albert betts in 1919 that you cannot extract all the power that is there in the wind you can extract at max only 60% of it that to theoretically so if you go for practically it is much much worse you if you get 20 30% of the power contained in the wind that is a huge a uh, huge uh, power improve efficiency improvement uh, um, i would say so that that much power you have extract from the wind so then we will see different types of wind turbines and then uh, decide which turbine would be suitable for which kind of location so there are basically two types of wind turbines one are horizontal axis wind turbine and there are vertical axis wind turbine horizontal axis means the axis of rotation is parallel to the ground is horizontal to the ground if we see the left side figure uh, that uh, turbine rotation axis if we see that is parallel to the ground that is horizontal to the ground that is why it is called a horizontal axis wind turbine and there are another type of wind turbine which is shown in the right side figure which is called vertical axis wind turbine here the axis of rotation if we see is vertical or perpendicular to the ground 
right this turbine will rotate like this and this turbine will rotate like this right so this if we see uh, the axis of rotation is vertical to the ground right so what are the differences between these two turbines we will see so horizontal axis and vertical axis wind turbines right so if we see horizontal axis wind turbine since the axis of rotation is parallel to the ground if i want to capture the rotation of the blade i have to keep my generator which which also should rotate along with the blades am uh, at the top of the tower because at the bottom of the tower there is no rotation at the top of the tower it is rotating if you see this figure at the top of the tower i am getting the axis of rotation so the generator gear box if you are using for amplifying the uh, speed uh, and then generator and then converter everything i have to place at the top of the tower at this uh, axis where three blades are intersecting behind that i have to place the all the equipment so these equipment will be heavy because these turbines are of megawatt or gigawatt rated so all this uh, equipment have to be placed at the top of the tower so that means this tower i have to have a very sturdy tower which does not which is able to hold the weight of the turbine blades as well as all the equipment associated with the wind power generation system so that is why you need to spend more money even on the tower cost because you need to have very sturdy tower which does because i am wantedly making the tower height more because because of two reasons one i will get uninterrupted wind because if there is any house or nearby it may obstruct the wind flow thereby i may get lesser wind power if i place the tower height more then i will get some uninterrupted wind right and if i place it more it is more prone to uh, failure and the sturdiness of the requirement of the tower will increase for further more so i have to have a very sturdy metal material to um, have a tower which of course increase my cost right so that is the uh, drawback of horizontal axis wind turbine but it can access uninterrupted uh, wind if it the tower height is long enough right so that is the advantage gear box and generator on the tower and it is costly cost basically increases because of tower uh, tower height and the tower uh, material uh because all the equipment also i have to place at the top of the tower for the horizontal axis wind turbine but we get some advantage also these are more efficient why they are more efficient because it, they are accessing the uninterrupted wind at the top of the tower right so that is why they are more efficient and similar features if we see for the vertical axis wind turbine vertical axis the axis is perpendicular to the ground so the rotation is is uh, can be uh, captured at the bottom of the ground as well so i can place my gear box generator converter if any i require everything on the ground if i place on the ground that tower has to only take the weight of the rotor blades that's it nothing else so the tower uh can be made with a less sturdier material which is just sufficient enough to carry the blades that's it so that is why it reduces the cost of the entire turbine and makes it cheap and the but these are less efficient less efficient because uh they capture wind right from the ground to the top of the uh, uh shaft so what happens at the ground there may be some wind which is uh, getting disturbed with nearby trees or any other obstacle so the wind velocity may may not be uniform only uh, hitting the blades from bottom to the top so that is why they are lesser efficient so if you have cost constraint uh, in the uh, installation of the 
turbines then you can go for a vertical axis wind turbine which are cheap and then if you want to extract more power efficiency is your concern then you have to go for horizontal axis wind turbine where you will have to spend a little extra money to um, make the tower uh, which can sustain all the equipment at the top of the tower also if you have land constraint it is preferable to go for uh, horizontal axis turbine because all these uh, equipment are kept at the top of the tower only the tower base is on the ground so uh, you can uh, save lot of land right so that is why uh, depending on what requirement uh, uh, we we have and of course offshore Uh, means on the seashore and all we go for only horizontal axis wind turbine because it is in seashore um, on the ground it is only water you cannot place the uh, vertical axis type turbines there so uh, in in short for very large installations with uh, high efficiency or offshore type applications we go for horizontal axis wind turbines for household uh, where efficiency is not that important uh, and uh, cost is more important for you then you can try for what uh, by vertical axis type wind turbines right and how much power rating and uh, how you decide that we will see later so first we will see how how much uh, what influences the rotation of the blades because the more faster the blades the turbine blades rotate the faster the generator mechanical input would be and the more the power i can generate right so what influences or how i can maximize the blade rotation in order to get maximum power extraction from the wind power generation system so first we will see an aerofoil aerofoil is nothing but if you see the blade of a wind turbine if i cut the blade and see some cross section because all the entire blade will experience a, uh, uh, wind wind so uh, if i cut the blade and see uh, if a wind is hitting that blade cross section at an angle uh, then what component of the force will try to rotate the wind turbine uh, that we will see so if at because the angle at which wind uh, hits the blade can again change throughout the day or uh, within every time it can change right because it is again not reliable or not in our hands so but whatever angle it hits i want my blade design to be such that i get maximum rotation from the blade right so basically if the blade is hit at an angle v at an angle like this it tries to rotate and it tries to lift the so there are two forces Um, that will be exerted on the aerofoil aerofoil means cross section of the blade so that forces if i take components uh, one is lift force which is actually trying to rotate the blade and which is the drag force drag force means which is actually trying to move the blade outside so uh, any any incidence uh, any angle the uh, velocity wind will hit the blade i can uh, take component one is trying to rotate the blade one is actually trying to push the blade outward so the blade the force which is trying to lift the blade is only required for us that i want as much maximum as possible and that maximum i can get for only one angle of incidence of the wind but wind the direction can change so for other directions i have no control so what i should do i should design my blade such that i get maximum lift force at every instant or i have to align my blade at every point detecting the direction of wind such that 
I get maximum lift force and minimum drag force. And this drag force is, uh, is not doing anything. And this drag force is counteracted by the tower. So all the drag force that acts on the blades will be counteracted by the tower, or will have uh, will have to be sustained by the tower. So if more and more drag force come, the tower can tilt and fall down. So Drag force, I should always try to keep it as minimum as possible and lift force, I have to uh, maximize it as maximum as possible. So when we design the blades of the wind turbine itself, we see, we have to see what angle I have to design such that I get maximum lift force and minimum drag force. Right? And, and in a, as, as the wind direction changes throughout the day, we have to also have a control on the blades so that I can align the blade to get maximum lift force. So this control is, we call it as pitch angle control. Pitch angle means the blade angle I am changing such that I get maximum lift force and minimum drag force at, at a given wind direction. So if the wind direction changes, again, I will orient the blade so that again, I will get maximum lift force and minimum drag force. So this control changes the pitch angle of the blade. This is done for all the blades of the wind turbine according to the variation of the wind speed direction. Right? So by doing this, if by increasing the lift force, a higher efficiency and thereby we get more power extracted from the wind right? and we have to also use this control for safety purpose in case suppose the wind some tornado or heavy winds come for which the wind turbine system is not designed for then you have to also turn the blades other direction so that the wind turbine will not rotate at a exceedingly high speed or more than rated speed. You have to save the turbine because if you save the turbine, then you are saving the generator and other equipment connected to it because there is a rating for every equipment which you cannot exceed. So if you exceed, then the equipment will fail, say generator or the that is connected at the output of the generator and so on. So you have to see that you are having the operating the system at a uh, speed which is less than the rated speed. So otherwise you have to do some corrective action or in the worst case you will have to shut down the plant uh, so that your system, your power generation wind turbine system do not uh, get spoiled because of uh, heavy winds or unexpected winds, wind speeds. Right? So there is another type of control which is called as stall control. And this stall control has passive stall control and active stall control, two types. Passive stall control is blades are designed such that efficiency decreases for very high winds. Stall, stall means you are stopping the wind turbine. So for very high wind turbines is there, is very high winds are there, then the blades itself try, uh, are not rotating. That means the drag force will automatically increase. That is taken care in the blade mechanical design itself. Right? And then active stall control means pitch control. You are rotating the blade such that lift force is reduced and drag force is increased. Of course, if drag force is increased, that increases the stress on the tower. But we cannot do otherwise because we have to save the turbine and the generator if heavy winds. If lesser, uh, if the winds are in normal state uh, below the rated, then we can use the pitch control to, con to uh, get the maximum power output from the wind. Right. And then there is another type of control called yaw control. Yaw control means instead of rotating individual blade, the entire tower, wind turbine including the tower, is rotated to face the wind, to be perpendicular to the wind to get the maximum thrust on the blades. 
so this is not generally preferred because if you install a gigawatt or megawatt plant you require a heavy setup or very costly setup to arrange for turning the entire turbine according to the wind and this is not safe also because during while turning there may be a lot of transients in and dynamics involved that may actually have an effect or may cause a mechanical damage on the turbine and the blades so but for smaller installations in watt or kilowatt range you can have a provision for your control but be noted that this yaw control or pitch control these again require power because you are rotating blade some stepper motor or some motor arrangement is required for rotating the blades or for rotating the entire turbine as a whole and so your overall efficiency will drop because if you take consider these power also as the some losses right so not generally preferred when pitch pitch angle control is there because rotating blade alone is easier uh, and in large installation that itself uh, can require lot of power because blade is not uh, in uh, blade itself weighs in tons of k, uh, kgs so that's why your control is not preferred and pitch angle control is generally good enough and uh, that when we place it uh, such that i get maximum throughout like solar panel angle only so you place the turbine such that based on the location or uh, last year or last previous year or five year data we take wind direction and then you have to decide what is the optimum direction i should place my wind turbine so that i get for most of the day maximum power uh extracted right now we will see some definitions tip speed ratio this is defined as 2 pi rn by v infinity where r is the radius of this swept area of the turbine and n is the rotational speed of the turbine and by v infinity v infinity as i told previously it is the free wind velocity Uh, without any obstacles that is the uh, wind velocity and this 2 pi rn is also a kind of velocity but it is the uh, velocity felt at the tip of the blade right and then power coefficient power coefficient cp is defined as power output from the wind to the wind power contained so the power as we discussed power contained in the wind we can get only 60% and then of that we will get very smaller percent output of the wind turbine which has again an efficiency and then there is a conversion system in place that again drops the efficiency by some extent so finally how power you got from the wind machine that divided by power because this is the like total output by total input input is total power that is there in the wind and then from that how much power you could get from the wind machine this is the power output by and then since aerodynamic efficiency this is useful power extracted from the wind power supplied by the wind so how much useful how much power is useful at the end from the uh wind power that is uh that is there in the wind right so now we will see the wind power generation system so predominantly what is the wind power generation system that is used most popularly is uh, this uh, to the turbine because you get rotating motion at the turbine after that uh, you generally employ a gearbox gearbox why it it is used this to amplify the speed because turbine rotates at a very low speed say 1 rpm 2 rpm 10 rpm very low speed but you know, for the generator uh, i require a speed of the range of 1500 rpm 1000 rpm or so so this 10 rpm 20 rpm speed uh, then the generated voltage will be very small so for that we amplify the a uh, speed of the uh, turbine by employing a gearbox gearbox simply 
amplify the speed and of course the torque will come down right so that is why that is how gearbox but uh, if you use gearbox your efficiency again will drop because gearbox also has an efficiency maybe 80% 90% so entire power at the input of the gearbox will not come at the output so some power drop will be there if you don't want this power uh, to drop or if you want to have higher efficiency then you have to drop the gearbox and directly feed the generator but in that case with the, you have to a uh, small speed you have to have some voltage boosting circuits are so so that you get a higher voltage at the output of the generator because the speed is very small or you may have to go for a specially designed generators which can work at very low speeds also right so and then after gearbox this is a squirrel cage induction generator because this window forms are generally placed in uh, uh remote locations remote locations means uh, in forests or in uh, sea shores where uh, human uh, if any maintenance requirement is there it is very difficult uh, for maintenance personnel to go and that too if you are employing a uh, say, uh, offshore wind farm you are employing a horizontal axis type wind turbine then you have to also climb the tower to get access to the generator and so so this is very difficult so we have to um, place the system to be very rugged and maintenance free once i place it it should work without any maintenance for years together so generally squirrel cage machines are very rugged because of the squirrel cage rotor structure so they are, they, they are brushless and they are magnetless so they are basically maintenance free machines that is why they are generally preferred for wind power generation systems in uh, uh, especially remote location installations so this squirrel cage induction generator uh, i have shown here where this mechanical input is given and the output will be electrical which is again uh, in the form of ac right and then of course squirrel cage induction require generator requires some capacitor bank in order to generate voltage that again has to be placed whatever is the requirement of this generator and then this power output as you know this power output will not be uniform because again if i have to convert to grid or use this at home i require 230 volt 50 hertz ac any other voltage or frequency is unacceptable so what i have to do is i have to convert this power in raw ac form to 230 volt 50 hertz ac and this power output in magnitude and uh, frequency will keep on varying because the wind speed will be changing throughout the day and the turbine speed will change and base and the mechanical input speed of the generator will also change and has the output to voltage generated also will change in magnitude and frequency both so what is generally done to convert this Uh, voltage or this side power into 230 volt 50 hertz ac and give to grid or use it at household loads is this is converted to dc right and here again you have to ensure that this dc voltage is at least 400 volt or 325 volt at least right and then this dc is again inverted using an inverter uh, to get single phase or three phase 230 or 3 3480 or 400 volt to three phase uh, and connect it to the grid so if you see here if i want single phase only 230 if i want three phase then again 400 so for that around 600 volt dc link i have to maintain so even in the smallest wind uh, rotation of the wind turbine blades uh, you have to make your system such that you get at least 400 volt for single phase at least 600 volt for three phase right so then only you, the inverter is will be able to convert to uh, uh, required single phase or three phase voltages satisfactorily otherwise inverter will not be able to right? 
So if that is not happening, then you will have to use another DC to DC converter for boosting up the voltage to the required value. Right? And if you want to consume the power directly uh, in the DC itself, uh, say for DC loads like computers or something, then you can use this power directly. Right. So that is, uh, and then of course you will need some battery because wind also like solar or any other renewable source is unreliable and in a day how much wind you will get uh, we have no idea. So be because of that reason you will have to we have some storage which can support in case uh, you get less power from the wind. So this system uh, we have to design for a given location. So what we have to do is first, uh, once you decide the configuration, this is called system configuration because here we are fixing squirrel cage induction generator, a rectifier and then capacitor inverter. These are fixed and then this can have, we can have other configurations as well. Suppose another generator I am using, say double fed induction generator or a DC generator, then the configuration will become different again. So first you have to decide for, uh, uh, for designing a wind power generation system at a given location. First you have to decide the after of course you after you decide the location then you have to decide what configuration of the system you are going to employ whether it is squirrel cage induction generator or dc generator or any other generator or any other specially designed generator so once you decide suppose we decide squirrel cage induction generator rectifier inverter and this configuration and gearbox also i am i am using then then the next step is we have to write the interdependent equations between the generator and gearbox. Suppose gearbox output is the speed input to the generator and scale cage induction generator output voltage is the input to this rectifier and the output is input to the capacitor and the inverter. So that way we have to write the interdependent equations. What are all the equations concerning every stage uh, uh, in variables has to be written. And after that, after that, we have to choose some, because this becomes interrelated equations governing the system components. And after that, this becomes a set of equations. All are in variables we cannot solve. So for solving it, we have to assume some values for certain things. Say, in what uh, uh, gearbox efficiency, I am thinking. Gearbox efficiency, say I take 90% or 88%. This is reasonable. I should not make an unreasonable assumption. Uh, and then machine efficiency as 80, 85%. I cannot assume generator efficiency to be 98% because it is not possible to have a practical generator with 98, 99% efficiency. Say converter, converter, I can assume 98% efficiency because it is possible practically. So like that using practical efficiencies, I have, we have to uh, assume some values and then the other values you have to compute, say power rating, I have to compute efficiency. Uh, and then once I compute the values I computed, whether practically the, uh, suppose after computing, I get a generator, uh, um, um, scale cage machine rating as a, a 1.69 kilowatt. 1.69 kilowatt generator is not possible. Either in market I have one kilowatt generator or two kilowatt generator. So I again have to keep two kilowatt as the rate, compute other parameters like that. In iterative way, we have to uh, check the, uh, such that the ratings of each and every equipment is according to the uh, uh, matching with the availability as well as which is solving this particular interdependent equations uh, which are there in the system. Once that is done, then you decide this is the rating of the generator 
and this is the rating of the this thing and these all you will take considering how much power you are trying to inject to the grid again same like solar how many units you want to generate in a particular day if i want 5 units uh, then uh, how much time you are going to operate say 5 kilowatt i want to generate so 5 kilowatt power for generating the uh, inverter output should be 5 kilowatt at this 230 volt voltage so based on that the current rating of the inverter is decided and the inverter efficiency i assume to be 98% which is a practical and then i will decide the this converter and then square leakage induction generator like that we decide backward and if any uh, component values we are not having you assume but make a practical assumption and then iteratively compute uh, because this is a large process and then and then finally you will get some value of uh, uh, some uh, value of the rating of uh, induction machine uh, and the gear box and the converter etc in order to inject 5 kilowatt of power to the grid so once you got these ratings so i have to have 5 kilowatt coming from the turbine itself right so that power uh, how will let for that first how much power output we are getting this is 5 kilowatt so that should include all the powers that uh, electrical efficiency mechanical mechanical efficiency means gear box efficiency and then cp cp is the uh, efficiency of of this uh, turbine and then electrical efficiency means this generator converter all the efficiency and this is the power available in the wind so finally this power should be equal to 5 kilowatt power that of suppose if i fix and then from this you calculate how much power the at the wind turbine stage i have to get in order to give 5 kilowatt because every every component in the system will consume power so here at the output i am giving 5 kilowatt so at the turbine output i may have to generate 7 kilowatt because 2 kilowatt is gone as losses in the entire system so at this end how much power i have to generate first that i have to know because i am going backward because my requirement comes from the uh, load not from the uh, other things so load i decided i have to give 5 kilowatt for that at the turbine i have to generate 7 kilowatt or say 8 kilowatt 3 kilowatt is lost in this generator efficiency and other things gear box etc so as uh, so that i will then determine so i have to can generate 7 kilowatt and for that 7 kilowatt how i should design my turbine so that will complete the process right so from this equation from this i will get how much power i should generate from the uh, turbine right so these are empirical relations based on the turbine diameter and the uh, and the uh, v infinity means free wind velocity without any obstacles right so from this approximately can understand from the diameter or you decide the diameter of the wind turbine blade because from any location i can extract any amount of power but that demands a huge turbine which may not be feasible cost wise for me right so i can extract 100 kilowatt in a region where there is no wind also but for 100 kilowatt i will require a huge turbine which is not practically feasible right so from there you will see with the diameter requirement of the wind turbine blades uh, and then from there you see whether this diameter is practically feasible or if it is for the given location or if not then you will have to reduce your power requirement say from 5 kilowatt to say 3 kilowatt then again you have to do the entire i to process and finally decide upon the ratings of the converter and machine and after that you will get 
the power uh, required to be generated at the turbine side so that power again you will compute the diameter and then you, you will see whether this is at least practically feasible or not right so after doing all this you will finally fix some turbine power rating and some turbine dimension and then your system power generation system or this is the rating of the wind turbine and this is the rating of the generator and this is the rating of the converter and if i do this i get uh, this much power output and uh, for a given uh, location right so after doing that and this is the maximum power that this is the rating rating means always maximum right so for the maximum wind uh, speed at the given location we have uh, decided how much turbine rating and other ratings so after that you will have to obtain a power output versus wind speed characteristic why this is important is because the input final input that is going into the wind power generation system is right wind at a given speed it is going and then finally what you are generating and generating power so that input versus output final input versus final output right so that if i see this typically for any wind power generation system looks like this so you generate no power until a certain wind speed why you generate no power even if there is a wind speed available because this is because see whatever power that is going in that is not be finally going at the load or the grid why because there are efficiencies uh, there are losses in every stage of the wind power generation system so if the wind speed is less than what we call as cut in speed what will happen is you don't get any power output because these losses in the generator converter turbine gearbox itself consume the power and you get no nothing at the output so there is no no there is no use of operating the wind turbine system in case the wind speed is less than the cutting speed because you will not generate any any power at the output so the then to operate them right so the speed is so low that the generated power itself is consumed inside losses itself and you get nothing at the out so so you beyond cutting speed only you can operate your wind turbine and then only you will start getting some positive net output after losses everything right and then of course obviously as you expected if the wind speed is more the more the power i generate i get at the output of the wind wind turbine till till and i always suppose wind speed direction may change but if i have pitch angle control by doing that i can extract more power by match, maximizing the lift force and minimizing the drag force so that i always extract maximum power output from the wind so as the wind speed increases i i get more and more power output from the wind after this say i have designed my wind turbine system for 14 meter per second rated speed suppose in a particular day for no particular reason the wind speed has exceeded my rated speed so what should i do if wind speed exceeded your the rated speed for which and how you decide this rated speed based on last 5 year data uh, average wind speed for most of the time in a day what speed the wind will uh, wind for a given location that wind speed you will take and design your system and now in a day the wind speed has exceeded the rated but my entire system has been designed only till that rated output power will be there until 14 meter per second only then what i will do i will use pitch angle control but now in an ineffer inefficient way means 
i will align the blades so that the lift force decreases and the power output decreases ultimately so what what will do pitch angle control will take care such that power output will not exceed the rating because if i exceed the ratings then the uh, um, more than rating the current will flow in the car converter as well as generator that may spoil the equipment permanently which i don't want right even if i am generating lesser power than i can generate but i am forcefully not generating because to save because my equipment is not rated for that because this happens once in a while not always but um, so uh, i should not i should save guard my equipment so that when the wind speed reduces below rated then i can uh, get to power right so that's why pitch angle control will should ensure that i always get rated output power and not more than that and pitch angle control is also a control by aligning the blades in opposite direction Uh, so that lift force is reduced, reduced, reduced. But till what extent? Only till one, some extent I can do that. Only till suppose 25 meter per second. After that, pitch angle control is exhausted. It cannot do be tilted any further. It is already operating at maximum drag and minimum lift force. But still, wind speed has increased. Then what should I do? Then I have to lock the blades of the wind turbine and completely shut down. And I will, I will not now not interested in any power generation from the wind plant. I am not rated, not any value. I want to safeguard my wind power generation system. So I have to lock the blades of the turbine permanently and to uh, shut down the system completely. Then the power um, will be zero, zero power. I don't want power now. I want to save uh, to protect my equipment. So this is called cutout speed. After which you have to shut down the plant. till cut out i can manage with pitch angle control now after cut in only i start getting power and till rated power i can get after that rated and then cut out so this is how a typical power output versus wind speed characteristic curve looks like for a for a given location right and then wind energy if i see how much energy i am getting for a for, because for a particular wind speed only i get maximum energy output right so this is typical shape for a uh, given location so this uh, can be approximated by curve fitting using weibull approximation right so this is how and then this maximum energy you how to decide based on the uh, location data and then you generally uh design your system for the uh, this this uh, this you make the rated uh, this you, you use for the choosing the ratings of your wind power generation system right now now we have seen a solar power generation system and wind power generation system and we have seen there are various components that are to be designed for uh keeping them at a given location right solar power generation system also require inverter and a dc dc converter and if we see wind power generation system also that we have seen also requires an inverter of course along with that it requires a, a generator a gearbox and a, a rectifier so those are specific but it requires an inverter so why not uh, combine both and make one inverter itself that may save some cost or uh, what can i do if i combine both solar and wind or any other uh, source by making it a hybrid renewable generation system right so that we will see uh, briefly so simultaneous generation from multiple energy sources because all the renewable power is available for free if i get more Uh, from more sources at a time say solar plus wind solar biomass solar wind biomass then that is advantages for me but seemingly it looks to us that it may involve more cost because you have to pay for 
the solar installation as well as wind installation or can we save some cost we will see okay so advantages there are numerous advantages if you go for hybrid renewable energies and generation most of the energy sources are all free and available at all times of course in lesser amount or greater amount that uh, that intermittent nature yeah, that but they are available free and then generating from more than one source gives me more power than with any one source obviously and that converters and storage we can optimize for combined generation and reduce overall cost in fact right that how we will see first we will see renewable energy availability in raw power now solar and wind so solar is we see solar in, in a day it is fluctuating of course and it became zero at night and then wind power if i see it is it is increasing and decreasing and if i see solar and wind together they are bit more like complementary in nature complementary means because if we, even we can observe in a cloudy day it will be a more windy day winds will be more and in a sunny day uh, there will be almost no wind right so a solar and wind if we see they are in a way complement each other or complement the complementary means when one is available other is not and vice versa so this is what i mean by complementary renewable sources complementary sources means if i combine the power output of solar and wind or availability of solar and wind together if i see it will be more steady it will not be completely flat uh, like how we have, we want of course but it can be assumed to be more or less constant or at least constant than solar and wind alone that we can say and the second source is abundantly available in the absence of first and vice versa so at night only wind is available at morning sun is available wind is not much available uh, like that right and if we observe at every location solar and wind are approximately complementary this has been uh, checked for many locations and proven that they are approximately complementary in nature so what are the advantages of complementary sources if i use complementary sources what are the advantages input power will be almost constant at any instant of time so this unreliable or intermittent nature of this solar and wind power we can reduce we can reduce to a lot of extent by making it almost constant right so if it is almost constant then i get assume that i am taking it from thermal power plant or so or there i can get constant input power right so if it is less less fluctuating then my storage requirement will reduce drastically so i have to use battery a large battery in case of solar power plant if i want to give at night also or even similarly large battery is required for wind power generation system also if i want to uh, give continuously power right so if i use both together then i now don't need such a large battery i may in fact require a very small battery which is smaller than both uh, individually right so that way i get an advantage if i use solar and wind which are complementary and then not only storage the converters itself can be optimized or fully utilized in in the case, uh, if they are used together for the combined source because see in solar power uh, generation system also you require an inverter in wind power generation system also you require an inverter suppose if i ask the how do you choose the rating of the inverter in solar power generation system the rating is chosen based on the peak power right because 
maximum power that can be going to the grid based on that i have to decide my rating of the uh, inverter and but that much peak power will not go throughout the day only less than peak power and at night no power will go through the inverter so that inverter is underutilized it is used only 30 40% of its capacity in average and similarly the inverter or the converter or the machine used in wind power generation system they are underutilized because they have to be uh, re, uh, re, uh, designed or bought i have to buy for rated power but rated power will flow only some part of the day not the entire day but i have to still buy them because that part some part of the day where rated power comes this uh, this converters have to be utilized to give power to the grid so that is why they are very much underutilized uh, but i have to pay money for buying them of the full capacity keeping in mind that some part of the day right so that way cost is will be cost is more in fact and overall cost per unit generation for the hybrid combining solar and wind i can make it comparable to the cost incurred with each renewable source installation suppose you want to install solar power plant in a given location or a wind power plant in a given location if the cost of solar plus wind is comparable or cheaper than individual solar and wind we can get more power as well as uh, Um, we, our cost is not very very high so that advantage we can see but in the world if you see uh, this type of hybrid renewable installations they are also coming up in recent times in jamaica 1.06 megawatt energy plant has been uh, installed it is in uh, jamaica we uh, it has to is to one ratio of solar and wind this ratio can change depending on location right india also we are uh, planning to build 160 megawatt plant 120 solar and 40 wind combined hybrid renewable energy plant in anantapur of andhra pradesh right so now we'll see how we can optimize converter and storage for hybrid renewable energy system right so this is one option first i will explain this this i will relate to the system configuration that we have studied previously the wind we have seen a squirrel cage induction generator of course with or without gearbox and then one rectifier which is converting to dc and then one inverter are converting to ac right that is the configuration we have seen for wind for solar also we have seen a configuration one dc to dc converter or another dc to dc converter also if you require boost in the voltage and then capacitor and then inverter so straight away if we combine solar and wind one inverter i can remove and use only one inverter for both and this one inverter cost will not increase also because now you may think that now more power is going so you require a higher rating of the inverter uh, so cost will increase no you don't require higher rating of the inverter why you don't require higher rating of the inverter is because these two sources are complementary in nature complementary means you don't get at a time solar plus wind and the total power will not increase more when solar is not there wind will come so that time also suppose here uh, um, power injected by this wind is 2 kilowatt if this is 1 kilowatt this will be 1 kilowatt or this is zero this will be two or this will be two and this will be zero but it will never be this will be two and this will be two total four so i require a bigger inverter So that is the advantage of complementary sources so with the same power rating inverter you are using for both so one inverter cost is completely gone 
right and of course battery cost will also go down because you have more reliable or more steady source uh, which is a hybrid source combined of solar and wind that is one advantage right so other, other converters remain same but this uh, inverter dc to ac converter you combine for the solar and wind and if we see the utilization of this inverter also at night if i installed only solar at night this converter is at rest it is not at all in use but at night also now it will be used because there is some there may be some wind power available so the the this is not as under this is now better utilized uh, this inverter right same rating but better utilized so that is good because i am spending some money to buy the inverter and install in the power plant i have to utilize them to as much extent as possible right of course other components are not optimal so this is first basic option and this itself has reduced my cost of the inverter and my cost of the battery right so two reductions and suppose if i add this solar system in addition to the wind then all i have to do is spend the extra uh, a little more cost on the panel and the dc to dc converter that's it and then i will have extra solar power also in, uh, extracted from that location right that is good more power more power is more better right so and by doing that you are saving battery right cost also right so by saving battery cost the saving you got you can invest in this by that you can get more power right so but this design has to be carefully done right and of course it is dependent on location and uh, each design of solar and wind have to be separately done and after doing both you match the inverter rating then only you can combine so this requires lot of iterations and lot of uh, and deeper analysis but it can be done if and if it can be done uh, meticulously you can save and get more power with the same money right and we can improve this configuration further how i can improve instead of squirrel cage induction generator if i use doubly fed induction generator but of course doubly fed induction generator has brushes and is not as rugged or as sturdy as induction generator uh, squirrel cage induction machine but this gives some advantage advantage is there are two paths for giving power to the grid one path directly one path through converter so what happens this path through converter will be uh, requiring only one third of the power uh, you will be giving other two third power will go directly to the grid without any converter so what is the advantage advantage is these converter ratings have gone one third here if i am um, designing the system for 5 kilowatt all this should be corresponding to 5 kilowatt right but here it is 5 by 3 kilowatt so it is reduced so that is the advantage if you use dfig doubly fed induction generator uh, but as i told this is doubly fed machines are not as sturdy or maintenance free because they have brushes but this is the advantage you get the converter rating is reduced for but the power injected to grid that rating is not changed that is fixed only converter rating got reduced by 1/3 so that is the another another improvement that you can think of right um, and another thing uh, to be mentioned here is uh, here uh, uh, solar power uh, you are connecting to this right so the solar panel uh, must be uh, aligned with the uh, grid right so then then you have to see so now we'll see a still better configuration if i connect the solar panel at the inverter which is Uh, have a operating at one third power then the inverter rating is uh, separate inverter requirement 
ಸಿಗುತ್ತೆ ಸೋಲಾರ್ ಈಸ್ ರಿಮೂವ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಆಸ್ ದ ಪವರ್ ರೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕನ್ವರ್ಟರ್ ಈಸ್ ರೆಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಒನ್ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಒನ್ ಥರ್ಡ್ ರೆಡ್ಯೂಸ್ಡ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಎಟ್ ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಕಮ್ ಡೌನ್ ಸೇವ್ ಬೈ ಒನ್ ಥರ್ಡ್ right so cost is reduced and also you are able to extract not only solar power but also wind power and by doing that you are getting more power and you are saved battery cost also uh, so these are the advantages and if design is done carefully this system can be cost can be even made cheaper then individual only solar installation where you can get only solar power or individual wind power installation where you get only wind power so that is the uh, uh, advantage uh, you have to uh, see right so this type of hybrid renewable power generation systems uh, are coming up at present currently is the research focus of many uh, many scientists across the globe so how to optimize and get because see all renewable power is gone waste right if you don't extract it is gone for the day of course again another day you will get um, so how to extract maximum and if we combine more and more number of sources then you can make this unreliable uh, nature uh, may and to a reliable one right and thereby your battery storage requirement you have to reduce because even though you are uh, saying that you are making renewable system pollution free and so so uh, but this battery which is again a made of chemicals uh, you have to Uh, reduce the consumption of battery or reduce the size of the battery so that uh, because a battery after it dies down it becomes again a chemical waste causing chemical pollution that is another kind of pollution which uh, after a serious after a large installations we may get into trouble and think of this is another kind of uh, uh, disadvantage so if we reduce or try to eliminate the battery that is the best option right make the renewable uh, energy system without battery how i can make it without battery i must make the system reliable how i can make it reliable you combine as many sources as possible and especially give uh, emphasis on the re- complementary sources like solar and wind and then you try to generate uh, power from them and reduce the battery and finally uh, eliminate, remove no no storage requirement right so that is the way uh, that if we had to that will be uh, helpful right and then uh, storage or battery consideration requirement is small with complementary sources and then the size of the battery can be further reduced by overrating the converters this what it means i'll tell you now see if you are making for your household that is fine if you are trying to make a business out by installing a renewable power generation plant and giving power to the grid uh, if you are making a large installation then you have to tell the grid that how much power you are going to generate the next day so if you tell that is called scheduling you have to schedule you have to tell how much power you are going to give into the grid the next day so if you tell that you are going to give say 5 kilowatt of power you have to deliver 5 kilowatt of power no matter what but with renewable power installation we are not sure whether 5 kilowatt because suddenly that may be a cloudy day or suddenly it may be a uh, wind power may not be that much available in a particular day so that way what happens you are you have to keep more storage uh, capacity uh, so that you will be definitely able to give 5 kilowatt even if in the worst case where there is no power coming from renewables so if you instead promise instead of 5 kilowatt you promise only 3 kilowatt say then you will have to require lesser amount of battery that in other word means you are over
uh, dear participants it's having good morning i think it's having due to net problem the resource person is disconnected i will call within 2 minutes i will communicate to you Hello. 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 Hello, sir. It's very sir. Sir, some disconnect happened. Very good morning. Good morning. Sir, if possible, you take five minutes uh, break for you. Take five minutes. Drink on tea. Okay. Okay. It will be shown me. Ah, no issue, sir. Only the conclusion I think is left. Okay. Okay. It's no problem, sir. Maybe ah, the time is up. It's not the new. Yes, interestingly, teaching the English lesson, I am also unable to disturb to you. <laughs> ah, it's okay, sir. So okay. just okay. give me that. Uh, <laughs> Sharing, okay, sharing okay, option. Yes, sir. Sure. I will give the sharing option to you, sir. You joined in different mobile, sir. I think. Okay, no. sir. I will give one. Yeah. I have given to you. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see? Yeah. It's. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. I will change. I will change. So, yeah. okay. okay. So, this converters we have seen. Yes. Uh, so, uh, size we can reduce further by overrating the converters or uh, by, by having a more uh, smaller. Uh, smaller uh, value that we tell that or we promise to the grid. Another thing is uh, with this hybrid and uh, renewable energy source, uh, if suppose it is not a sunny day, you can get more wind power. Like that, you can uh, still generate sufficient amount of power uh, even if one source is unavailable on a particular day. So that way also you can get increase the reliability of the power that you are generating or your power plant uh, overall. Right? So uh, along with the solar and wind, which is a very good combination for making a hybrid renewable energy plant, you can add other sources also, say biomass, biomass or hydro like that. So uh, by adding these sources, uh, you can try to again uh, reduce the battery and reduce the requirement of and increase the reliability. Right? Storage, storage requirement mainly. And now uh, conclude. So we have seen how to design a solar and wind power generation system at a given location. And we must take into consideration many factors, location, how much budget you are having, uh, availability of the converter, because if you go and ask for uh, converter of uh, this rating, that may not be available. So you have to see availability uh, and then correspondingly match that uh, using that available one, you have to match with the uh, uh, location and also your budget. So this, this is an iterative design technique you have to follow for, for designing at any particular location. And then finally you have to arrive at a feasible values of uh, uh, solar power system or the wind power generation system of various configuration that, uh, that you have decided. Right. And then we have also seen hybrid renewable energy systems that have a lot of advantages in terms of cost as well as efficiency. So you can reduce the cost of hybrid energy system and also increase the 
efficiency by extracting more power and utilizing the converters which are commonly used for say solar and wind and uh, increasing its utilization then you are actually saving more cost indirectly right so that way we have advantage and for making hybrid system complementary sources are the best candidates and converter sizing configuration which configuration you have we have seen three configurations for hybrid include for so including solar and wind uh, and then configuration and their operation how you operate them is critical in such system and with careful sizing configuration and their operation you can uh, actually uh, reduce the size and optimally uh, make the system uh, reliable more reliable and also you can save cost and get more power and more power in a reliable way right thank you thank you very much dear participants okay okay sign up dear participants if having any query to unmute your audio and direct interact with our resource person the sari is ready to give her clarify your doubt sir uh, sir one question yeah sir how to estimate v reference in flexible power point tracking sir v v reference v reference value in uh, flexible power point tracking how to estimate that depends on the load load demand load see load current i have to feedback load voltage is fixed right yes sir yes sir a load current i am sensing based on that i have to compute v in uh, dot i inside the code and then try to estimate the power if the generated power is less than then you have to move away from the maximum power point until this uh, error becomes zero error means error between the power generated and power demanded by the load okay sir okay thank you sir thank you sir it's i mean thank you ravi deja sir for accepting and our invitation and delivery a very nice and excellent lecture to our participants thank you once again mr sainath sir uh, please tell what of thanks to our resource person dr avi ravi deja from iit rupar with your permission sir thank you so much sir it's a very great lecture uh, these topics are design of uh, solar and wind systems as a uh, cultivated the research interest among us and also these topics has uh, created many uh, triggered the research problems and this is very useful for us and uh, and thank you thank you very much sir once again for uh, spending us your valuable time on behalf of priority thank you very much sir the pleasure is mine sir thank you professor sir thank you sir welcome sir thank you sir thank you sir, thank you, sir. Uh, dear participants the feedback link is posted in this chat box please complete before 1 pm today after then it is it will automatically will disable them so the afternoon session will start at 1:30 pm the resource person is dr ravi kumar from iit triple hyderabad we'll meet at 1:30 dear participants thank you ravi ravi teja sir once again thank you